Today, I want to see how many Disney movies I can prove canonically exist in the same universe. Now, if you've never seen a video like this before, let me quickly explain how this works. We've got a board, we've got some Disney films, and we've got a Vegard. Uh, and I'm too tall. So I will bring up a Disney movie and then explain why this Disney movie connects to another Disney movie in the same universe. Are you doing like sign language for me? Uh, well, was... <laughs> Whether that be through the same character appearing in both of them or you know, whatever kind of long-winded explanation I can think of to try and rationalize two movies that were not intended to exist in the same universe existing in the same universe. And if I can successfully convince Vegard, he will connect them with the yarn on the board. We did this with Pixar before and a lot of the movies connected. I think there are only about five that we can actually get to connect and a lot of them were like, oh, it's just too far in the past or there just aren't enough Easter eggs and it will probably connect. In the we, we did pretty well. And we typically found when we did that video that uh, the best kind of Easter egg is when a character from one movie just shows up in another movie. It's hard to dispute. Like, do you remember when Riley from Inside Out showed up in Finding Dory? We were like, that pretty much proves it. Do you remember that at all? <laughs> but the movies will also have to pass a thing I'm going to coin the logic test, also known as the, the common sense test, which basically means if a character from one movie shows up in another movie, but they just, it doesn't make sense that they're there, then that doesn't really go. So for example, if uh, one movie takes place a thousand years ago, and then a character from that movie appears in a movie a thousand years later, I'm not going to give that. I don't think that counts because it isn't logical. What about magic? Magic is considered canon in this universe. Time travel is not? Maybe? Yes, probably. A lot of magic time travel. What I'm trying to say is a lot of the movies take place over lots of different periods of time. You've got some movies thousands of years ago, some in the future, some in the middle. Basically, there needs to be a logical explanation why the character would be in a certain situation. You'll see as the video goes on. And despite the fact a lot of these movies are just all over the place, we're gonna try and create a, a concise universe, maybe, hopefully, I don't know, I guess you'll see. It's actually the balls in Vegard's court, really. And before we fully get into it, I feel like I should narrow down what we're working with for this video. Firstly, we're only working with Disney animated movies. We're not gonna try and connect live action movies of any kind. And that's also not including Enchanted, which is kind of animated, but not. I just remembered that in the moment, actually. So anything that's like kind of half animated, half not, that doesn't make it in, I'm sorry. I'm also not going to try and connect any animated stuff from Disney Channel or Marvel, and with that, we officially have the corner of they weren't important enough to be included in the video. The reason for this is mostly just I, how long did I spend making this video? Writing this? Um, it's been a month. I mean, I mean I've done a video on that before. It, they go on forever if you try and connect everything. We needed to draw a line somewhere. And with that said, it also has to be solely made by Disney Animation. So I'm not including anything that was distributed by Disney but animated by another studio, for example, like Pixar. I'm also not going to be including any of the Disney Animation movies from World War II. And I, I was going to make a little uh, thing for that, but I, I realized maybe that wasn't... Uh, so the reason why? Um, so the reason why is because a lot of the Disney animation movies from the World War II era were kind of like three stories stuck into one movie. And also because they revolve around mostly Mickey Mouse and the characters from that series. And with that said, there are two franchises I'm going to be completely ignoring, Mickey Mouse and Winnie the Pooh. Because to be honest, they're just such expansive universes, they could warrant entire hour long videos of their own. and. I, I don't have time to do all that today. Which essentially means I won't be addressing any Easter eggs that connect Disney movies to Pixar movies or Mickey Mouse or Winnie the Pooh. So if you're about to comment, oh my god, you missed the Finding Nemo reference in Bolt or the countless hidden Mickeys in pretty much every movie they've ever made. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't be connecting all of that. This video is long enough as it is. And with all that narrowed down, there are about 50 Disney animated movies that we're going to be going into today. and. A lot of them have sequels and TV shows that follow them, but I'm just going to be considering them all one franchise if there are multiple elements to the one series. So to start, let's address the elephant in the room. Dumbo? Uh, 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 Wreck-It Ralph. Um, I think it just put it in this corner of death. Can you do it with more like pizzazz? Like, like, like this is the death. This doesn't even, yeah. Boom. Oh my God. Wreck-It Ralph has the unique problem in a video like this of having too many Easter eggs. <laughs> Usually you have films that just have no Easter eggs at all and there's no way to get them. This one has too many, at least 
in the sequel. This movie completely breaks the fourth wall and goes into the internet and specifically the website Oh My Disney and features every Disney princess and a character from pretty much every movie I'm going to try and connect in this video. And you might think, well, that's great. Just connect every movie to that and uh, you can end the video there. Like and subscribe. Uh, I'll see you in the next. But it doesn't really accomplish what I'm trying to prove. I already know that Disney own all of the characters that they show in this movie. We're not trying to prove that Disney exists as a movie company that own all these characters. I'm trying to prove that these movies all exist within the same universe. And I don't know, this just is a major contradiction. So we're not gonna include it. Maybe Wreck-It Ralph exists in our world. So it's, that these are all movies to Wreck-It Ralph. That could be true. Where there is a cinematic universe. Maybe, maybe Wreck-It Ralph is the starting point um, where the cinematic universe exists. But also probably not. We're not including that. The first movie could have connected really nicely. There were some good connections like Meet the Robinsons and just various games and stuff. But not, 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 not here. So let's start with the first movie on the timeline. Dinosaur. Have you ever seen the dinosaur movie from, from 2000? No, but it looks like it's trying to be what the land before time was. <laughs> you can never be her. Also, I know this may look like we're getting off to a really bad start, but it also doesn't connect. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this movie has no easter eggs that I can find at least. Which is a rarity, to be fair. The problem is that this takes place millions... Oh. Let me guess, does it take place when dinosaurs were alive? It, it does. This takes place millions of years before any of the other movies, so... If I somehow found an easter egg connecting it, that, that would almost be impressive. But, um, no, I, I could not find any easter eggs to it. It's the same as the good dinosaur in the Pixar video. It was just so long ago. How are you meant to prove that it exists? Time prove same... evolution. <laughs> what? Let's move on to the actual first movie in the timeline, and that is Hercules. So Hercules is based on the Greco-Roman myth about Hercules, the son of Zeus. Historically, it would be suggested it would be around 1200 BC, which is over 3000 years ago, or as we call here, a very long time ago. The first connection is in an episode of Hercules, the animated series called Hercules and the Arabian Night, Hercules crosses over with Aladdin. Can you confirm that? That is, that is Aladdin. Essentially in this episode, Hades and Jafar team up to try and take out both Hercules and Aladdin in one fell swoop and do you know, do, do, can you guess if they succeed or not? I'm guessing no. Yeah, you're right about that. That's the best connection I've got. They, they literally have a crossover episode. And that means Aladdin and Hercules presumably take place around the same time, which I know is further in the past than Google says Aladdin takes place, but this is a canon crossover. I, I, you, you can't argue with that. So Google is wrong. And Google is going to continue to be wrong about timelines throughout this video, unless you can actually prove it with evidence in the movie. I don't care. And this is my evidence that Aladdin and Hercules take place at the same time. Also, that summer wasn't enough. The Temple of Zeus appears when Aladdin and Jasmine are doing their flying carpet, and that's also in Hercules. Now, next up, I want to talk about the Little Mermaid. And in accordance with Greek mythology and lore, Zeus's brother is called Poseidon, and he fully shows up in the Hercules movie. And in the Roman variation of the gods, Poseidon is, of course, called Neptune. And Neptune is none other than the father of Ariel's dad, Triton. So basically, Ariel's dad and Hercules are cousins in mythology sense. How's that? <laughs> Is there anything else? We also see Ursula in the Hercules show. Oh, yeah. And also, is Hermes kinda... She's dead. <laughs> now, I just wanna clear up with the timeline. The Little Mermaid obviously takes place way further forward than Hercules and Aladdin do, and it's probably 19th century based on the technology shown in the movie. I don't think that's a problem though, because firstly, Poseidon or Neptune is a god, so he's immortal, so he could have children thousands of years apart, no issue. And Ursula is a mythical sea witch. Ursula is bitter enough to stick around. <laughs> so yeah, canonically, Ursula is either well over 1,000 years old in this universe or can time travel. You can decide. Now, next up, we have Cinderella. And Cinderella connects to the Little Mermaid as the king and grand duke appear at Vanessa and Eric's wedding. Who the fuck is Vanessa? Vanessa is Ursula pretending to be a human and she tricks Eric to marry her, yeah. which proves that the Little Mermaid and Cinderella take place simultaneously and yeah, are both probably around the 19th century. I think that fits up really nicely based on technology in both of those movies and yeah, human advancements and all that. 
stuff. <laughs> Me trying to find ways to say this a thousand times over the course of the video. <laughs> Next up, we have Princess and the Frog. So at the Mardi Gras celebration, we see a float of both Triton and Jafar. Now, obviously, this movie takes place in 1920s New Orleans, which, I mean, I guess all of this happened long enough ago by then for them to be like, historical figures that are now being celebrated. I, oh, I don't know why I'd celebrate Jafar, but you know. <laughs> so yeah, we've got King Triton. I mean, it is just a float though. They're not even exactly that. So let me bring your attention to one of the most common Easter eggs that appears across Disney movies. Do you recognize this? Uh, is that Aladdin's blanket? <laughs> <laughs> so he is bilingual think... to be fair, guys. Let's not Shut laugh up. at him that, okay? <laughs> the magic carpet and Genie's lamp. Now, I'm gonna be the first to admit, I'm not convinced by this lamp. I mean, the handle's different, and also, we don't even know if it's a Genie's lamp. It could just be a regular lamp, but the carpet looks identical. I mean, uh, do we count the carpet as a um, character? The magic carpet is technically a sentient being. There's no reason to believe it isn't immortal, yeah, <laughs> because, like, carpet. it's a carpet. So, I don't know why someone's, like, dusting it off. Maybe they found it like a fossil. Yeah! Can you imagine? They've just found it. They don't even know it's a magic carpet yet, because they're dusting it off. And then it gets passed down to Alex Russo in Wizards of Waverly Place, and that's how we connect that with. The idea that it would be, like, in New Orleans in 1920s, and also in Agrabah 3,000 years before, I think that kind of, that kind of tracks. Right? And it can fly. It and can go wherever it wants! Next up, we have Moana, and once again, you know, you know what appears in Moana? <laughs> the lamp. And the magic carpet. The magic carpet apparently appearing on the island where it gets dropped onto Pua. Uh, and the designs are similar, but even I'm saying that's a major stretch. It's, it's like a, same it's color. a crusty brown carpet. And then the genie's lamp appears among Tamatoa's shiny treasure. Um, I mean, I have a lamp that looks like that. That's what I was thinking. Unless I see a genie come out of the lamp, mm -hmm. then... Part of me isn't gonna believe it. More convincingly though, during the You're Welcome music number, Flounder from The Little Mermaid is actually seen right here. Ah, that is a fish. Okay, so you, you, don't, you don't support this, but Disney actually decided to post on their official page and they just confirmed a bunch of Moana Easter eggs for some reason. Well, wow. <laughs> um, I guess so... it's not just a fish, it's a fish. <laughs> This is a bit weird though, because You're Welcome's a musical number and Maui's just lying throughout the entire song. Like, he sings about how he created the winds and the sky, but he didn't do any of that. I do think it raises the interesting question of, are musical numbers even canon? Because like, uh, in like Encanto, for example, there's a point where she starts singing and has a musical number, but the rest of the world pauses in that moment. I it think if it's really obvious happen. that it's not canon, then it's mm. not canon. But in yeah. Moana, it feels like everyone just likes to sing. Also, just as a further connection, there's an end credit scene where Tamatoa just directly references Sebastian. Can we be real? If my name was Sebastian and I had a cool Jamaican accent, you'd totally help me. You would, you know you would. Now, Vegard actually just gave me Little Mermaid in Moana without me actually explaining the timeline there, which was very kind of him, but I'm going to explain it before someone comments, Oh, actually, Google says that Moana took place 2,000 years ago. I agree. And to be honest, it, it probably was meant to, because historically, there was a period in Polynesia called the Long Pause, which is a real-life time period where the people in Polynesia lacked the technology to sail eastwards, and it, it, that's basically the plot of Moana. But nothing is said about this in the movie. All we know is that Maui stole the heart of Tafiti a thousand years ago. So I'm just gonna say this was also happening simultaneously with The Little Mermaid for the sake of this video. Because if that's not the case, Sebastian and Flounder will both have to have been thousands of years old by the time The Little Mermaid took place, and I, I don't think that was the case. I, I hope you're okay with that, and if, if you want to argue that, then get, go argue with someone in the comments about it. Um, okay. Next up, we have Disney's newest movie, Strange World. I don't know why I picked it up again for dramatic effect, but um, I felt like I did something there. Now, I obviously already have an entire video where I argue that Strange World exists in the same universe as Moana. TLDR, slight spoilers for Strange World, by the way. Strange World takes place on a massive turtle. Like, massive turtle. It basically takes up, like, a large portion of the Earth, this turtle. And in Moana, when we see Tafiti create all of the land of the world, she creates what looks like some sort of turtle island. I'm arguing that these islands are the same island. And I even asked the director of the movie about two months ago whether this was true, and uh... I, I will neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> but okay. I think that's an interesting theory. He kind of said... Uh, that's completely correct, Seamus. He didn't say no. Is there more? Well, you might also remember when I spoke to the directors, I also asked them if there were any Easter eggs or cameos in the film. 
And they did specifically say there, there's quite oh, a quite all. a few uh, uh, Easter eggs on this one, uh, and like full characters that yeah. show up, From and they're the like movies. in deep backgrounds and yeah. on shelves inside the venture. I just can't find any other than maybe. I think I may have seen Felix from Encanto in the background of one shot. That's the best Easter egg I can find, is that potentially those two are the same. Also, in the timeline, I'm not sure it really fits up with Encanto, because Encanto, again, probably around a 20th century movie, and Strange World is kind of unclear where it takes place, but what we do know is that they haven't explored beyond Avalonia. I feel like they discovered the sea for the first time at the end of the movie. The only thing I can explain as to why maybe they've never been discovered is because the turtle just avoids everyone and they don't have satellites in space taking photos of the earth yet. So as soon as a ship gets near it, the turtle just moves away. That's the best I can do. I think it's a weak connection and I think um, it would be a disservice to this video to accept it. <laughs> Talking about Encanto, let's raise the are musical numbers canon question once again. In the musical number Surface Pressure, Louisa actually directly name drops Hercules and we see a bearded version of Hercules fighting Cerberus. Is so referencing myths and religion the same as uh, a character crossover? She references the Titanic in this song as well. So. In my head, she's referencing things that happened in the past of her universe. And if that's true, then Hercules happened in the past of her universe. And if Hercules happened in the past, then Hercules can end. This could just be argued to be a modern render of his character. Like just, it's a different animation style. Yeah. I know he's got a beard, but like, I think it kind of suits him. So I'm going to give him that. I guess that would connect it. Woo! We got it. Let's go. Who's doing it like this? No one's doing it like this. And to complete our pile of new movies, I'm just trying to get through the newer movies. We've got Raya and the Last Dragon. Now again, this is a problem and we had this in the Pixar video too, I think. The newer movies don't have as many Easter eggs because yeah. you know there haven't been enough movies for them, for the characters to show up in. But Hey Hey from Moana does show up in the market. That is the chicken. I agree with you here. We can't see his face, but some would argue it's Hey Hey's trademark to have his face covered. I don't remember this movie, but he doesn't have his head covered once in okay. all these pictures that you're showing me. That's one time. This actually fits up really well timeline-wise. Okay, why? Okay, and I'm glad you asked. Since we have covered that Moana takes place in the 19th century, and at the end of Moana, they go out on their boats again, they're ready to take on and explore the world, right? Once they start sailing east, what is the first place that they're going to find? Australia. Or Asia. South Asia, which is where Raya and the Last Dragon takes place. And therefore, Moana being at this market with Hei Hei could really be plausible. Do you have a picture of Moana there? No. I thought like full character cameos counted for something. It's a, it's a covered chicken head. <laughs> Next up, we have Frozen. This is your movie. I'm Norwegian. So the connection to Frozen is Moana. Me. At the very start of Moana, when Moana's dad is showing them like the dangerous monsters of their world, he shows them one of like Tamatoa, he shows them of Takar. If you rewind all the way back to the first one, you see this guy. And this guy is actually Marshmallow from Frozen. And Vegard may be looking like that, but he's gonna realize he's a right mug when he realizes that Disney confirmed the Moana Easter egg again. I <laughs> have made a severe- You might ask, wait, how does that fit up in the timeline? I didn't ask. We know that Frozen takes place in the year 1840, or a bit after 1840. Norway wasn't even a country. Yeah, that's why it takes place in Arendelle. There's a map of the world on the ship their parents die on that reveals the Roman numerals MDCCCXL. Wait, the, wait, wait. So M is 1000, D is 500, C is 100, so they've got three of those, so that gets to 800, yeah. and then L is 50, X is 10, but because the X is before the L, is that another child of Elon Musk? And you might think, okay, well that's great. Moana also takes place in the 19th century. These fit up perfectly. But the question you're probably wondering that for some reason you're not asking is, wasn't Marshmallow killed by Hans? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> you literally like, took the words right out of my He was seen by about 10 people yeah. and then died. But actually, in the end credit scene of Frozen 2, Olaf goes up to Marshmallow and tells him the story of Frozen 2 with a load of other sentient snow children. And if that isn't enough for you, but I feel like it is, when Maui's fishhook is 
he's like malfunctioning, he accidentally uh, turns into Sven from Frozen. No, that's even better. Why didn't you do that one first? But I actually think there's also dispute over this. So I don't know why I'm arguing this with myself. You're... I'm like my own worst enemy. I'm like, I'm like, but actually, Shane. <laughs> you said, what about the timeline? Because I was like, how would Maui know what Sven looked like to turn into him? Because he would never have met Sven and he was stuck on that island for a thousand years. He's just converting into anyone from the universe. That's what I was thinking. And also it's in the moment where the hook is malfunctioning. Like he's not even in control of it. It's really the hook that is confusing. Not this. Moana and Frozen existing in the same universe. That's clear. The hook, a little bit confusing. Next up, we have Tangled. I'm pretty sure this is an Easter egg that most people watching this video are gonna know. Rapunzel and Flynn. Flynn. Why did I call him? Sorry, I'm so sorry. Rapunzel and Eugene both show up at Elsa's coronation in Frozen. She didn't change her hair or her dress. They finally got their child back and immediately had to ship her off to another country to go to a coronation. And if you're wondering about the timeline, that proves that Tangled also takes place in the 1840s because, you know, it's happening simultaneously with Frozen. It's also worth noting that both these movies take place in like the Northern European area. So yeah, they're really not far apart and it makes a lot of sense that they could connect and meet up in this universe. You know what else takes place in Europe in the 19th century? Pinocchio. And if you see this scene in the Snuggly Duckling pub from Tangled. That's Pinocchio. He's not been lying a lot. He did a My Truth YouTube video. <laughs> could you imagine? <gasps> what oh are you on about? He did like an exposing video on YouTube and it was like a notes app apology, but he just kept lying. So then eventually it just like, the nose pokes the camera lens and then knocks it over. That's so funny, someone needs to make that. <laughs> Sorry, right? He's like, I'm not like this anymore. Yeah, I am so sorry. And then he's like, I, I have changed my- How long is this going on for? Um, so yeah, I think that's about as solid a connection as one comes. Pinocchio yeah. literally showed up in Tangle. But there is the argument of what was he doing there? I'm assuming this was before the events of Pinocchio because we know Geppetto had created him before Pinocchio started and we don't know what Geppetto gets up to in his day-to-day -day life. Maybe he went on a trip to the Snuggly Duckling pub. Maybe he needed material. You know, that's a really good point. This is the canon. Geppetto went to Germany to get materials to oh, make Pinocchio you. and finished Pinocchio at the Snuggly Duckling pub where we see him and then brought him home back to Italy where the events of Pinocchio take place. Begard is having uh, issues connecting. This is what we pay him for. Oh, this because of this pen. I... Picked up the broken pin. Oh, also, do you remember the events, uh, the plot of Pinocchio at all? Okay, well, there's a whale. He gets swallowed by the whale, and then they make the whale sneeze. Oh, they and, do. Um, that and, it, and this whale is also seen in The Little Mermaid. It's actually shown that it is the same whale through the fact that he also sneezes out the Little Mermaid, Sebastian, and Flounder in that it's episode. He's not having an easy time, is it? Are you actually agreeing that's the same whale? It's drawn in such a specific way that it feels the same. Yeah. Some of these are a uh, chicken, and some of these... <laughs> are huge whales that sneeze and do the same thing. Now there is a slight issue with timelines. Actually, I probably should have addressed this earlier, being the genie and him referencing Pinocchio and also just referencing various famous people and characters from the Disney movies in general, including White Rabbit, Pocahontas, Pumba, Mickey Mouse even. There was also a theory posted on a forum by an anonymous person back in 2009 that suggests Aladdin takes place in a post-apocalyptic future, which explains why the genie is able to reference all these things that happened thousands of years ago because it was in the future. But I don't, it doesn't fit with the Hercules crossover. He's a magic Aladdin. he knows everything. He can grant any wishes. And yeah, I'm, I'm just saying what the genie does doesn't really count. Either either. way, we've already connected it, yeah. so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You, 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 we're not going to change it now. What do we have next, Vegard? Hunchback of Notre Dame. Do you know when Hunchback of Notre Dame takes place? The book actually takes place in 1482 France during Louis XI's reign. The movie never references Louis XI, but it's clearly based in pre-Reformation France. I'm gonna assume it's 15th, 16th century France. And in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, there is a return of the magic carpet from Aladdin. That is a purple carpet. There's a million details on both the top and bottom of it. I think it would make a lot of sense for the carpet to be in 15th, 16th century France, because that was a pretty exciting place to be, if you like death. There's no... no so no, you don't no, think no. this is gonna be... Okay, 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 it's fine, it's fine. So the other thing is there's a character from Hunchback he in Notre Dame. He looks like Tom. the one in Aladdin. Yes! This looks exactly like Jafar's old man disguise that he wears in Aladdin and also the Hercules episode that he features in and just like, this is Jafar! Now you might be thinking though, isn't Jafar dead? Well, at the end of Aladdin, he gets turned into a genie. So they don't actually kill him, but then, in the return of Jafar, they destroy his lamp, which does kill him. But it's been shown before and 
could happen again that he can be brought back from the dead as Hades brings him back from the dead in the Hercules episode that he features in. So I don't think it's out of the question that Jafar could be in 15th, 16th century France. You know what guys, I'm feeling nice today. And I <laughs> thought that was the same character that Seamus showed me in two different pictures. I'm gonna say that the animation style, they just had a little less budget and that carpet was drawn poorly. And that's why it doesn't have all the details on it. Thank you for accepting my bribe. We're not debating whether it's Jafar. The question becomes why Jafar is there. And realistically, that isn't what I'm here to explain. I'm just here to say that they connect in the same universe. And I've proved- There's a lot of questions and I'm not gonna answer any of them. <laughs> you know, if you have an issue with this, how about you take it up with the creators of The Hunchback of Notre Dame? Because it's not my problem that they put Jafar in their movie. Wow, it's really coming along. And also, if you analyze that scene with the magic carpet that Vega didn't really think was the magic carpet, but you kind of got convinced by the end that they couldn't be bothered to animate the magic carpet well enough. You'll see another character that you might recognize. Kind oh, of... Belle. She looks photoshopped in. <laughs> she kind of does. This fits up quite nicely, I think, because obviously Beauty and the Beast also takes place in France, so not too far to travel for Belle to get to Paris. And in terms of timelines, I think we can make a pretty strong argument that it also takes place in the 15th, 16th century. I mean, it's definitely pre-revolution France. So this is probably the most flawless connection I've got. I just want to bring this up because I know someone's going to say it, but the beast also shows up as a toy in Aladdin. If it doesn't fit up with the timeline, why would he have a beast toy anyway? The beast is like, he hadn't even been born yet. Maybe the witch who cursed the beast took inspiration from a beast years ago when she turned him into a beast. So therefore, and that was, that toy was the inspiration for that. Beast. The witch was also Ursula. Now you're getting it. Next up, we've got Pocahontas in this scene where the, the English are getting ready to colonize the USA. This is um, a really interesting movie, isn't it? You can actually see Belle's dad. Yeah, That's a there. guy with a white mustache. It is, it is, it is, it is. It's like, it's confirmed basically, other than it hasn't been confirmed. Belle's dad is, is there. At Why? They're not even from England. Okay, let's just pause it here. I don't know when Vegard started caring about the timeline this much, but he is right. As we've clarified, Beauty and the Beast and the Hunchback of Notre Dame take place in about 15th, 16th century France. Pocahontas takes place at the start of the colonization of America, and specifically that started with Jamestown in 1607, which is at least 100 years on from there. So he would be pretty old. I feel like I should address with Pocahontas as well. I was like trying to play off, oh, Belle's dad's there. Every character in that crowd is just duplicated like 10 times. Oh, he's there again. Oh, he's there three times. They just really <laughs> use the same. Oh, no, we're gonna ignore that, okay? <laughs> we're not gonna ignore that they just copy pasted I people. think everyone in this is copy pasted about a hundred times. If it was Belle's dad, then we would have to rationalize it by the fact he's also one of the octuplets. What's next then, you may ask? Tarzan. There's something about this era of movies. Tarzan, Pocahontas, Mulan, you know, like in the Renaissance, where there's some movies that just have no Easter eggs in them. The only thing we see in Tarzan is Mrs. Potts and Chip and the tea set that they come with in Beauty and the Beast. But this is a weirdly detailed Easter egg because Chip literally has a chip. And that's like the whole thing of his character. He has a chip. Wouldn't have guessed Cut. by the name. What's the other one called? Teapot? Mrs. Potts. Here's the thing. Well, you're already thinking it, but I'm gonna try and put that into words. Firstly, Tarzan's a bit further in the future because of some of the technology that Jane brings with her, being like a typewriter, she has a record player. She has technology that was only invented in the 1800s, so therefore it must be about 300 years beyond the events of Beauty and the Beast. However, as we can tell, they are inanimate. And at the end of Beauty and the Beast, when the curse gets lifted, one would assume that all the furniture that came to life went back to being inanimate objects as the characters became human again. However, when they do turn back, they don't actually show what happens to the furniture, but we know for a fact that the furniture did all exist before because, I mean, like, an organ comes to life in the sequel. Why <laughs> did I imagine an internal organ? Oh. <laughs> in this case, the teacup and the tea and the so what is it called? A, a, a tea pot. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Pot. We've both had dumb moments here. I take it the teacup and the teapot went back to being just inanimate teacups and teapots. The only problem is that they are now like 300 years old. I don't think that's that big of a problem. I don't think that's that big of a problem. And I went on Google and went, how old can you buy crockery and stuff? And yeah, you can buy crockery easily from hundreds of years ago. I mean, you wouldn't want someone playing the drums with them. 
especially a monkey playing the drums with them. But I think the fact that there is a chip in this specific cup and we can see it's the same set is such a precise detail. And I don't know why Jane would buy a hundreds years old tea set and then bring it on an expedition to Africa with her. Cause I feel like when you buy something that old, you just put it on display. But we're gonna ignore that. That that's that's a her problem. It's just been passed yeah. down. Oh, she maybe. doesn't know. Oh, I like that. And yeah. she's traveling with it. She's like, this is the old. We'll bring this one. Yeah. Well, there we go. Let's do the Lion King. We're just we're sticking to our African theme. We we we've, we've just been to Africa with Tarzan. Now we're staying in Africa with the Lion King. How are we gonna connect this one? There are no humans in this film. Vegard is probably wondering right now. Yeah, I actually am. Yeah. The Lion King is evidently an animal centric universe. There are no humans in the Lion King movie. Uh, you looked shocked. The, the, no, the... sorry, I stand out. <laughs> and this is also an issue with some of the movies that we are going to get into later. Because as much as animals are more intelligent in Disney movies than they are in real life, a lack of humans will make it pretty hard to connect it to movies like Frozen, Moana, where the humans are very much the focus and animals aren't that smart. But I'm getting to the Lion King first before I get into the other animal-centric movies, because with the Lion King, we actually do meet humans. You just have to venture to the TV series Timon and Pumbaa. And most notably, we meet Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast, who makes a cameo in the episode Serengeti Western. Wet for the record, he directly references Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have left the castle. <laughs> You happy with that? Yeah, he's he's happy with that. He's just he's already pinning it. I'm not gonna lie, that must be the one of the weirdest Disney crossovers of all time, right? Yeah. I don't even know what the thinking behind that was. Like, why are we putting Cogsworth? Did you watch that episode? No. And since in the movie The Lion King, there's no real clues to where it takes place, I think that's all the evidence we need to prove that it's taking place in 15th, 16th century Africa. And yeah, that means it's quite a few hundred years before Tarzan, so there won't be any crossovers there. But I guess the real question is, how did Cogsworth? get to Africa. Sounds like a problem for the people who made Timon and Pumbaa the TV show. And that's why they're calling in right now. <laughs> also, I should just clear up as well, with that confirmed, that means that this Easter egg of a scar on Hercules, it can't be scar because this was 3000 years ago. That's just, in my opinion, just a random line that kind of looks similar. That is scar, yeah. But don't you think in 3000 years, there could have been a line that looked just like him with the same scar on his face? We're talking 3,000 years, that's a lot of lions. Sure. Oh, and I also probably should address the problem with Lion King one and a half. So they pretty much break the fourth wall. No, they don't break the fourth wall. They like destroy the fourth wall. They, they, they leave no fourth wall left. They might as well break the fifth wall in that movie. You know, Where's the fifth wall? I don't know, but they break all the walls because they watch their own movie. What I'm going to say about this is the events of the movie that they are watching is canon, but them watching the movie in a cinema screen is not. And that is purely because they did what Ralph Breaks the Internet attempted to do 15 years earlier at the end of that movie, where every Disney character ever shows up and starts watching the movie with them. And yeah, that, that's not, we're not counting that. Anyway, next up, we're gonna move on from these uh, movies in the part, oh, okay. Sorry, I just saw you get a drink. I got like caught off guard. We're gonna talk about the furthest movie in the future Big Hero 6. Woo! Have you what seen- Wally? I thought that was serious for a second. The disdain you had on your face. So a funny strike they've been doing a lot in the films recently is trying to hide Baymax in pretty much every movie. But those are kind of like, I don't think that's anything really, is it? It kind of looks like a snowman already. And then it's like two dots and, and a two line. two dots and a line on a face. This movie does connect to Frozen still. Do you remember when they go to Fred's house and they recuperate and prepare for the final battle or- the midway through the film battle. And seen in Fred's house is a statue that looks all too familiar. Wow, he was frozen and now he's rock. What if he's a descendant of Hans? Are they evil? Fred, no, but evilness isn't genetic. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird to have a statue of your evil uncle or whatever. What if they don't know if he was evil? Also, uh, this is another fun one. You see this painting when they're in Fred's house in mm -hmm. the corner. That also shows up in Anna's house in Frozen. Oh, it's a descendant. Yeah. And that's how we connect descendants. Yeah, I think there's quite a bit of evidence to prove that Fred is probably a descendant of Hans. Also, it's not entirely clear where Big Hero 6 takes place, but it's definitely like way further in the future. I would say 200 years after Frozen. How many relations down would he be from Hans? Like, 
six, seven, 200 years, no more. Also, again, I just want to bring up that there's another Easter egg of hands that people are going to say, oh, what about this? We see him on like a wanted thing at the police station, but this could be someone that just kind of looks similar. It's pretty far away. And also in Disney movies, wanted posters are notoriously wrong a lot of the time. How do you feel like we're at with this this so far? We've, we've, we've built a nice universe, haven't we? Yeah. Well, what if I told you I'm going to introduce aliens? to the mix. I mean, we have mythical beings and uh, half fish have humans, so I don't think aliens nice. are Nice. Well, aliens are coming into play now. Welcome Lilo and Stitch. The main connection to Lilo and Stitch is actually through the large amount of merchandise pertaining to the series. So firstly, just to start with what we just left off with, in Big Hero 6, we can see Hero's cat with a Stitch hat thing on. And then in Fred's house again, because he has loads of obscure merchandise, he has a cushion of Stitch and also a cushion of Splody Head, character from Lilo and Stitch the series. Oh, I remember that guy. You've watched Lilo and Stitch the series? Sorry, that wasn't meant to be like a shaming moment. It's just the fact you haven't seen- Okay, we're gonna pause again. I'm gonna censor this moment for God's sake because you do not want to know the amount of things we have covered that he has not seen that I have cut out of this video. I am not sure if this man had a childhood. How much do you value merch? Merchandise. Um, I would say I value it more in a Big Hero 6 where it's like so far in the future. These aliens are not around on the planet anymore, so people have started selling stuff, like referencing back to them, but I don't think it's the strongest. Yeah, I agree. And in the timeline, Lilo and Stitch is kind of vague, but it has black and white TV record players, so I'm inclined to say it's mid to late 20th century. And I believe that would make Stitch the first known alien to reach Earth, at least in this universe. Hasn't happened yet here, as far as we know. This is when I just like start morphing. If they really are the first aliens on Earth and they haven't become massive celebrities that have toys of themselves, yeah. They've done it wrong. Well, Stitch <laughs> famously is a massive capitalist. I hope Lilo has completely girl bossed her way to the top. She is <laughs> like the PR manager signing the song. She's like taking Stitch to all the meetings. That's all I've got. That's all I've got. Okay, okay, yeah. No, I. Vegard's in a good mood. He's given it. This is why I keep talking about the logic test. Because if a Stitch toy showed up in Cinderella, it wouldn't count for anything because why he hasn't existed yet. Because Big Hero 6 takes place after Lilo and Stitch, yeah, it makes perfect sense for them to have merchandise. Next up, we've got Treasure Planet. This movie is the first movie of all these movies to take place on a completely different planet. You know what planet it takes place on? Yeah, it takes place on Treasure Planet. However, since we now have some established aliens existing in the universe, especially through the Galactic Federation shown in Lilo and Stitch, we have something to work with. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if there's an Easter egg from Lilo and Stitch in there, I think that counts for something. And in Jim's room when he's a child, you can actually see a little Stitch toy mm -hmm. in the corner. So personally, I think that's all right. But I do think it's a little bit weird that a child has merchandise for a, a legal genetic experimentation project. They did. Oh, yeah, but that but on, on Earth, that was fine. Yeah. Another connection that might be all right is uh, Pleakley. You remember Pleakley from Lilo and Stitch? She's one of the... Um... He. Yes, he often plays like the girl character. His disguise is dressing up as a human woman. That's yeah. like his disguise on it. In the cafe scene at the start of Treasure Planet, there's a character that somewhat looks like Pleakley, at least dressed up as a woman. Well, it's very uh, shriveled looking. Is this in the future? This would be in the future. This would be an older version of Pleakley, if so. At yeah. least it could be a relative. It, it could be. Because that. It, yeah, you never know. Anyway, yeah, we've got that in the Lilo and Stitch merchandise to connect Treasure Planet. I mean, I feel like that's good enough. I immediately recognized it as that character. You, you did, as soon as you saw it. Apparently that was convincing, but Maurice in Pocahontas wasn't. Pocahontas. And with that alien talk done, let's move on to dogs. We're, we're going to do the dog cinematic oh, universe. The next one I see, I love it. I remember this movie so well. Next movie we have Bolt, where we revert back to the police office in Big Hero 6. If you look on the guy's desk, he has pictures pertaining to both Bolt and Officer Esther from Bolt. Now, the main question I imagine on your mind is, how does this fit up with the timeline? Because obviously that would connect them. I was just about to say. Isn't Big Hero 6 way in the future? I mean, the reason why you'd think Big Hero 6 is further ahead than Bolt is because of the technology. But Bolt's technology isn't that far behind and also different places in the world have less advanced technology than other places in the world too, so. Yeah, I felt like Bolt happened when it happened in real life. They could easily be only 10 years apart, I think. I feel like someone just got lazy in the animating office, but. <laughs> photos are good, I think, because photos imply that there's like a personal connection between 
between two characters from one movie to another one yeah. rather than just a character showing up. This discovery really excited me. So in the first episode of 101 Dimensions the series, Home is Where the Bark Is, there is a silhouette of a very, very familiar face on the train. Now I know a silhouette maybe isn't the most convincing thing to you, but do you recognize that? Oh my god, you didn't get it that quickly, guys. It's the genie, Vegard. It is meant to be the genie. Quite well, yeah. This is, I think, your weakest one so far. However, I mean, there are a bunch of Disney characters there, most of them not included in this video, which I guess connects it. I thought your argument was going to be, what can the genie be doing in- Oh, I am wondering. Yeah. I'm saying no. Say, but Seamus, oh. does this pass the logic test? But Seamus, does this pass the logic test? 101 Dimensions obviously takes place in 20th century England. And you might be thinking, but isn't Aladdin like thousands of years ago from there? Isn't that what I said? But here's the thing, genies, are immortal. And well, you might also be thinking, but Seamus, didn't the genie give up his powers at the end of Aladdin when Aladdin freed him? So now he's just a regular person. But he's not because he remains a genie and that's shown in the sequels. He, he keeps the rest of his powers. He just seems to be free from the lamp. Then he so, really wants to travel the world. That's actually what happens in the live action remake. He goes off to travel the world after being freed from the lamp. However, this is also kind of weird and I don't get why, but despite the fact 101 Dalmatians, the movie, and the sequel, Patches London Adventure, take place in England. The TV series, they're in a farm in America. <laughs> and this specific moment, I believe, happens in New York. And you thought we were done with that specific episode of 101 Dalmatians, the series, Home is Where the Bark Is? No, we're not. <laughs> Apparently this is a proper clutch episode for this <laughs> cinematic universe because Jock from Lady and the Tramp also shows up and he fully like talks to them, he's got a full spoken role. It doesn't look the same. Yeah, but it's just a different animation style, I think. Okay, if you don't want to give that though, it's fine. Because you know what Jock also shows up in? What? 101 Dalmatians the movie. Are you still not saying this is the same dog? It's just a dog breed. Well, you know who else shows up in 101 Dalmatians? From Lady and the Tramp? The Lady and the Tramp themselves. You see, that's the Tramp. Okay, maybe that's a little small, you can't really tell. Are you denying that is Lady from Lady and the Tramp? Okay, that looks, I guess that's enough characters from it that I can say that it connects. I will say the weakest connections you could find is dog breeds. What you're, you're not considering is this is an animation studio. Do you think they have designed a new dog? Or do you think they have just reused the animation of a dog from a film from a few years back? Yeah, but you, you you want to sell it as like, oh my god, that this was planned. They really like wanted this to all live in the same universe. No, no, I've 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 already admitted this isn't this this wasn't planned. And you might think this is all perfect, especially with how it lines up in the timelines. But it is a little bit weird, I guess, when you think about how Lady and the Tramp takes place in America, and obviously the Hundred and One Dimensions movie is set in London. Considering the Tramp gets taken in by Lady's owners at the end of the film. I think it's believable, now he has really rich owners, that they could just go on a holiday to England and just happen to have been in England on this specific day. I don't know why they were like, just on off the leads in the middle of a street, but you know, when the midnight bark comes, yeah, you have to bark. Also, as I've covered a couple minutes ago, they move to America to a farm for the series, and that flawlessly helps explain why they show up in Oliver and Company. So all Has of anyone seen this? <laughs> So in all of the company, pretty much all of the Easter eggs come through during the song, Why Should I Worry? Do you remember the song, Why Should I Worry? Oh, I love that song. song. Yeah. To start, we see Jock again, but Vega doesn't like the Jock Easter eggs. Then Peg and Trusty, all from Lady and the Trap. Also, this takes place in New York, so they're also kind of in a similar area, in America at least. Also, that's not it during this one song. Because we also see Pogo from 101 Dalmatians. That's four dogs from two different movies. Was well, there a lack of like animators for dogs or something? Next up, we have The Great Mouse Detective. What the f*** is this movie? <laughs> Vegard is not familiar with his Disney Dark Age, clearly guys. This is a fun movie because it's a Sherlock Holmes-esque movie, except with mice in the place of the detectives. Also, Sherlock Holmes is canon in this movie. And we've got another Easter egg from Oliver and Company. Oh. This movie's fantastic. I don't think you're gonna give me this, by the way. Okay. Um, but this is a scene from Oliver and Company. You'll see amongst her pictures, this one specifically at the back, is Professor Rattigan from The Great Mouse Detective. So you think that's Professor Rattigan? Yeah. You do? But no, what was the logic here? To be fair, this is a pretty tough one anyway, because as we covered, Oliver and Company is taking place in like the mid to late 20th century, whereas The Great Mouse Detective is 
<laughs> Victorian Britain. So these are like a hundred years apart already. But I kind of like this in the sense that it's a black and white signed photo and she just got like an old photo of him because he's dead now. I've got in my notes to say, uh, if Vegard doesn't want to give me this one, it's fine. There's another way in. We've just got to go the long way around. Okay. <laughs> We're going to put Great Mouse Detective on hold for now. I think we can connect it to another movie. Well, I know we can connect it to another movie because none other than Bill the Lizard shows up in The Great Mouse Detective. Am I meant to know what that is? He's in Alice in Wonderland, and then he reprises his role. Remember Rattigan, the guy from the photo? He's one of his henchmen in this movie, and he's the only one of the henchmen that's a lizard and isn't just a mammal of any kind. So I, I don't know why that is, but he's there, and that uh, pretty much 100% connects it. So the timeline for this actually works quite nicely. Alice in Wonderland and The Great Mouse Detective both take place in Victorian England. The kind of confusing weird part is that, well, Wonderland is imaginary. Like Alex literally had a dream about Wonderland. It, 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 she was asleep, so this isn't real. So how is Bill the Lizard real then? Is probably the question you're wondering. Here's what I'm thinking. Wonderland is like this, this dream realm that you can enter in your dreams. And Bill the Lizard also had a dream and entered this dream realm. And that's why he's there as well. That's famously how dream realms work. And with that, we can now try and connect these two to the rest of the board. And I have, think, a pretty good connection. At the start of Pinocchio, when Jiminy Cricket's about to tell the story of Pinocchio, we see a book. And you might be thinking, yeah, we see the book of Pinocchio. But if you go into the corner, we see another book titled Alice in Wonderland. But this is telling the story of Pinocchio. Here's the thing though, in the story of Pinocchio, this is a non-fiction book. Jiminy Cricket is real in this story. He is telling this as if it's a true story from his life. So who's to say that Alice in Wonderland also being there isn't also a non-fiction book? Well, have you ever owned a fiction and a non-fiction book? at the same time. Okay, well, that answers that question. I was gonna say the timelines fit up really well because Alice in Wonderland takes place in the 19th century as does Pinocchio, so therefore having a book of Alice in Wonderland could work really well, but sure, okay? We'll find another way in, Vegard. We'll find another way in. Pin Dumbo. So if Dumbo is going to exist in this universe, it completely changes the way we're gonna view the, this entire world. How are children born? What? In Dumbo, how are children born? Oh, with storks. Children are dropped off by storks. This completely changes the dynamic of these movies altogether. In any of these movies, do you ever see a mother go into labor? No, I didn't think so. If you're gonna connect it with a stork, you're gonna enjoy this. In Aladdin, when they're on the magic carpet ride, they fly by many storks. None of them carrying children. But think about it like this, okay? They fly by these storks, and then there's that stork at the end of it that sees them, and it's shocked about them flying. A real world stork wouldn't even be remotely surprised seeing humans in the air. These are intelligent storks. These are magical storks that deliver babies. And that's why I, okay, yeah, yeah I don't think you're gonna give me that one. I've got another one there. By the end of the movie, you could say Dumbo becomes a bit of a celebrity in a similar way to Stitch. You know, he gets signed onto a Hollywood contract because he's the first ever elephant that can fly. So it wouldn't be a surprise for people to have toys and merchandise of Dumbo. We've got two movies that contain merchandise to Dumbo. Firstly, in The Great Mouse Detective, we have a Dumbo toy. And then in Lilo's room, we also have a Dumbo toy. How does all this match up timeline work? So I'm saying Dumbo canonically has become a celebrity. People are selling toys for Dumbo everywhere. And therefore Lilo has bought a toy of Dumbo. And toys of Dumbo also exist in The Great Mouse Detective, meaning it connects to both Lilo and Stitch and The Great Mouse Detective connecting it all. But when do these happen? So uh, yeah, D Dumbo must happen before both of those movies. Must or does it? It has to. There's no other way it works. Is there anything that shows that? Why are you getting all s s annoying about the timeline now? Oh, I actually do have where Dumbo takes place. Oh, and does it take no, place? it's fine. It's in the, it doesn't matter. According to the newspaper at the end of Dumbo, it takes place in the year 1941. I actually had it written down. This takes place in 1941. And it didn't even cross my mind that that clashes with the Great Mouse Detective being in the Victorian era. It connects to Lilo and Stitch because Lilo has some Dumbo merchandise. Dumbo is obviously a celebrity that Lilo likes. And that's how she gets inspired to sell more to uh, Stitch. Yes, Dumbo was the inspiration. Dumbo was the blueprint. So continuing on with the Oliver and Company Easter eggs, this must be the weirdest Easter egg there is. Because Aurora from Sleeping Beauty is seen walking down the street in Oliver and Company. I agree with your look there. I don't really think it counts because it's too small and it's not really that clear. But this animation has been ripped right out of the movie. Like if you do a side by side, it's literally an animation of her from the film. However, and I know you were gonna say this already, it doesn't fit up 
in the timeline. In the timeline, I was just thinking. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty takes place hundreds of years before Olive Oak and Company in a completely different country. But that isn't it. If you see Tangle, there's enough of book Easter egg with a sighting of Sleeping Beauty just open in the Kingdom Library while Rapunzel and Eugene are there. Obviously, if this is all going to connect, this would have to be a non-fiction book. And I believe it is because they are reading a book about the world. You got to think, if you're Rapunzel right now, she has known nothing her whole life. Is she going to want to dig into fiction books and read more stories? Or is she going to want to learn about the world and how it is that she hasn't seen before? So no surprise, one of the books she had open was Sleeping that, Beauty. That looks like also a book that was just like kind of on display. Doesn't not make sense, but it also just feels like something that's already like display page. So you're, you're being a little strict now, aren't you? Um, <laughs> we've gone this far and I gave you a lot of dog ones. Now that I kind of understand some of the timeline, you know, I just want to, I want to hear the logic continue. Well, because you've done so much work for the previous ones. I just want to follow through. I'm going to play my trump card. Mm -hmm. Sophia the first. I was a girl in the village. <laughs> <laughs> this was on TikTok. So I know Sophia the first might not look like it fits in the rules I put in first. I just said we're only working with Disney animation movies and characters from Disney animation movies will show up in shows every now and again and it won't make any sense with the timeline because another character will show up from the show and it's like House of Mouse for example every Disney character is in House of Mouse but it doesn't actually make sense in a, in a timeline sense but this one is actually different in Sophia the First three of the main characters the headmistresses of the princess school that she goes to are Flora, Fauna, and Mayweather. Which means that I kind of see this as a little bit of a sequel show to Sleeping Beauty. However, there's a bit more to it. I'm not like, I was actually shocked by how much lore there is for this show for literal four-year-olds. Look, I'm just, I need my laptop for this. this. show, plus the sequel show, Alina of Avalor, take place in the Ever Realm, which is a like parallel fairy tale world to Earth, meaning it does not exist in this world as all the other movies connected do. But Sophia has this thing called the Amulet of Avalor, which links all of the princesses that ever were. And when she's in trouble, the amulet can magically summon another one of the princesses across the realms for help. Meaning it obviously doesn't exist in the same realm as the rest of these movies, but it probably does exist in at least a parallel universe. And we've got a new color of yarn. Blue in the key is to symbolize connected through a parallel universe. Meaning it automatically connects to Cinderella, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, Tangled and Princess and the Frog through cameos from Cinderella, Jasmine, Belle, Ariel, Rapunzel and Tiana. And then also, of course, creates a connection to Sleeping Beauty. Obviously through Flora, Fauna and Mayweather showing up in there, but also because Aurora is in an episode. Moving on from that, let's continue with the movie that started it all. I don't know how I haven't even got to it yet. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, which has no Easter eggs because I mean, for essentially the same, but almost the opposite reason to the later movies, there was nothing to have Easter eggs from because it was the first movie. And for whatever reason, they don't want to put Snow White characters into later movies. I, I don't know why, but you'll never guess who appears in Sophia the First. So Snow White connects through a parallel universe realm, as you might have expected. And then we also have Mulan, which also doesn't really have many Easter eggs, other than, again, that tangled book scene that Vegard wouldn't let me have. But you'll never guess who's in Sophia the First. Mulan. So I didn't actually think Vegard was going to give me Lilo and Stitch. And you know, if you're still not convinced about Lilo and Stitch connecting to this universe, we've got another little Easter egg for you. Nani actually has a poster of Mulan in her room. Different hair. But actually, oh, wait, that could be maybe that adds to it though, because obviously in this world, Mulan is a real person, but they've made a movie about her because she's a historical figure for what she did when taking on the Huns. That's the actor who played Mulan in universe. Some of them were only connected through alternate universes, but we take those in this video. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna go into uh, what I'm gonna call the dear Easter eggs. So, Basically, I feel like I looked at every Disney wiki page for every Disney character that has ever existed in research for this video, just to see like what movies they might have shown up in. And when I went on Bambi's mum's page, she was in like 10 movies. But what I realized after looking into what these Easter eggs are is that essentially any time a deer or a doe appear in a movie, 
if someone online is going to say, that's Bambi's mum. I will say some of these are better than others, but I would just pin Bambi now. Okay. You've got to pick your favorite essentially. Okay. So Bambi's mum allegedly appears in the very first scene of Beauty and the Beast. There is a deer. There's any deer. And this was noticed by someone who goes by the name of MZ Lulu, who posted on a forum in the early 2000s that Gaston actually killed Bambi's mum on the basis that this doe is Bambi's mum and that Gaston kills animals. There's nothing here to say that uh, any of these animals are Bambi's mum. Two plus two, Gaston must have been the mystery hunter that killed Bambi's mum. <laughs> I don't think you're giving that, are you? No. Um, so Bambi does not connect to the main universe. The next potential sighting is in the movie Sword in the Stone, where Kay is seen hunting a deer that I will admit shares a little bit of resemblance to Bambi's mum. Better than the one from yeah, Beauty and the Beast, but it's yeah, not... it's like so, a specifically very long neck. Also, this one doesn't work for timeline reasons. It doesn't pass the logic test because Bambi's mum was killed by a gun and Sword of the Stone is based on the legend of King Arthur, yeah. which is like 5th century. There were no such thing as guns back then, so it literally does not work. It's actually been a while, you know? It, part of me's kind of missed the corner of shame. Next up, we have the rescuers. Is that the one where they go and rescue her? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, like, with the, the crocodile. Actually, specifically in the scene where Penny is like crying and like thinks all is lost in the world and looking into the water, you get the shot of what looks like Bambi and his mum. That's it, even the same like mm -hmm. look to the side, the long neck. I mean, it's definitely reused animation. Yeah. I think that's a pretty convincing one. But why are they in a and That's the question. How does it fit up with the logic test? What we do know about the rescuers is that it's post World War II because there's a United Nations existing in the rescuers. And this would mean that Bambi takes place in 20th century Louisiana, which is where the rescuers, well, that's at least yeah. where the cabin she's lost in is. Are deer local to this area? Yeah, there's seasons and regulations for killing deer in Louisiana. I think it's very possible that this could be Bambi and his mum. The final deer Easter egg though, is from the Jungle Book. Do they really not have any other animations? <laughs> the Jungle Book also makes pretty good sense because that would have taken place in 19th 19th century India. Obviously technology is coming on a little bit as shown in the movie. The thing is, they are both Bambi's mum, but only one of them, they can't both be it. Because... Well, then I think the one that features yeah. two characters is stronger. For now, that means we're giving Bambi and the rescuers a connection. When I started writing this, was hoping that you were going to give me the jungle book instead of the rescuers, because I was sold on a dream by an internet commenter that Flounder from The Little Mermaid shows up in The Jungle Book 2. Oh. And I was like, wow, wouldn't this be great? If, do you want to see the Easter egg of Flounder in The Jungle Book 2? So... That's it. We're done. So yeah, Jungle Book doesn't connect. And I was going to connect Fox and the Hound to The Jungle Book because apparently Boomer, the woodpecker from Fox and the Hound, is in The Jungle Cubs episode Buffaloed, but it doesn't even matter because The Jungle Book doesn't connect. That's what brings us to The Emperor's New Groove. And when I tell you... In Kronk's <laughs> no. New Groove, the sequel to Emperor's New Groove, Kronk is riding this train, which is a model of Casey Jr., which is the train that carries the, the circus from Dumbo around. It is the same train. And also, this train is technically a character. I don't really remember Dumbo well enough, but it's described as an anthropomorphic steam train. But if we're going off Dumbo being like a iconic thing, maybe they made a movie about Dumbo's life, and you think in Emperor's New Groove era, they sold merchandise in the form of a medium-sized person version of a train? <laughs> well, clearly, because he has it! This is gonna get very sad very soon, guys. We were doing so well. So we've got Atlantis, The Lost Empire. I thought, at the very least, this movie would connect to The Little Mermaid because they both take place in Atlantis, right? Yeah. Do you know where The Little Mermaid actually takes place? Where? The city of Atlantica. Atlantica. They changed the name of the city for the Little Mermaid. So it, not even on that technicality can it connect. The, the only thing I have for this, and you know, this is a really good Easter egg, and I'm just sad it's gonna count for nothing. But basically, at the end of Disney's newest film, Strange World, they like pan out and there's a comic book of the thing. There's a book in the corner of this shot 
that is actually, the writing is in Atlantean, which is obviously the language from Atlantis, the Lost Empire. And if you translate what the letters are, I can definitely work out the word Atlantis at the top. So I'm guessing the bottom three words are the Lost Empire, meaning this is the book of Atlantis, the Lost Empire. But Strange World didn't make it in, so it doesn't count for anything. <laughs> Next up, Ken I from Brother Bear. Allegedly, according to some internet commenter, I don't think they look anything alike. There's a character that bears resemblance to him. Bears. That, that was an unintentional pun from me. Well, well I'm, I'm on fire. To uh, this guy from <laughs> That's the best we've got. Nothing there, guys. Next up, we've got Peter Pan. So, I'm not gonna lie. I thought Peter Pan was going to be the easiest one to connect when I started this. There are, for the record, eight canon Peter Pan movies. Peter Pan, Return to Neverland, and then six Tinkerbell movies. You know how many Easter eggs I could find? Zero. Almost none! How? How is that possible? I just thought Tinkerbell would be such a common Easter egg. I don't know. You just think, like... Yeah. She'd just be in a movie, you'd just fly in there at some point, like just in candles, like you know when like, it's like butterflies or something, why don't you just put Tinkerbell in amongst them? Yeah, for Peter Pan, we're gonna turn to fan theories oh, to, wow. to make this work. Tinfoil hat is on. So the first fan theory I found, and I've really struggled to find where this was first suggested. The earliest I can find it on the internet is on a website called fanpop.com, where in response to the question, how did Ariel's mum die, Tetawaki1982 responded saying, Captain Hook's ship killed her or he killed her. There is a bit of evidence behind this as well. So we meet some mermaids in Neverland. Oh. Now this one is suspected to be a young version of Ariel's mum, who we actually meet in the prequel, Ariel's Beginning. So there's some similarities there, not perfect, but they've got a similar tail color, similar hair color, similar thing in their head. And in Ariel's Beginning, she, she, she gets killed by pirates. Two and two together, what does that equal? Ariel's mum was killed by Captain Hook. Is there any other characters that lap over? Like, or any of these look like the other mermaids? To be honest, yes, they probably are. Because I imagine most of them are white and have blonde and dark hair. Does this ship uh, resemble anything like the ship Captain Hook? I mean, they're both pirate ships. But like, the bigger issue for me is that Ariel doesn't live in Neverland. Okay. Unless, what if Atlantica is in Neverland? Maybe that's why time doesn't move the same there. Does it not? I don't know. Oh, because... Ursula is old. Oh, that explains how Ursula shows up in Hercules. Yeah, it's all coming full through. circle. Uh, I mean, it's compelling and like fun, but it's How about fun. I give you a second theory and then you can decide if you like either of them enough to give a... Okay. Because next up, I've actually come up with this theory myself. This theory is that Alice's sister from Alice in Wonderland is actually Mrs. Darling or Wendy from Peter Pan's mum. Now, firstly, I want to talk about appearances. They look somewhat Similar. I mean, they're, they're different ages. They've got similar eyes, mm -hmm. sort of similar face structure. She's obviously a lot younger. She could grow up to be her. The timelines also fit up here, being that Peter Pan takes place before World War I in England. Alice in Wonderland takes place in 19th century England. So there's a good decade for her to get older and be ready for Peter Pan. But the clincher for me in this is their voices. They sound exactly the same. Will you kindly pay attention to your history lesson? Now, George, really, it comes right off. That just sounds like an old recording of any voice. Da, 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 like everything sounds Well, like. both Alice's sister and Mrs. Darling were played by the same actress. Oh. So I'm suggesting that Heather Angel is actually canon in the sense that she's playing a younger and older version of the same character. Otherwise, if you're not convinced by that, the only other real Easter egg for Peter Pan is the fact that the book also appears similarly to Alice in Wonderland in Pinocchio. If you want, you could technically give both of these. You could give Alice in Wonderland to Peter Pan, and you could give Peter Pan to the Little Mermaid, and we would be in business over here. The th string should have been getting thinner and thinner. <laughs> I told you I was getting the Great Mouse Detective in. You chose the long way around. Well, look where that got you. Shockingly to me, Tinkerbell makes like one cameo in another Disney movie ever. And that movie just so happens to be Black Cauldron. In this movie, you can see a Tinkerbell here. I mean, just the existence of fairies, I guess. I've never heard of this movie before. Like some of these I've uh, at least heard of. I think a lot of the movies in the 80s you wouldn't really know about. Next up, we have the Aristocats. You know what's in the Aristocats? Nothing. The best Easter egg for the Aristocats is in the live action remake of 101 Dalmatians. The dogs are watching the Aristocat. That's that's the best Easter egg there is for that movie. Next up, we have probably the most hated Disney movie of all time, Home on the Range. I, I was trying to look for Easter eggs for it and I Googled Home on the Range Easter eggs. Didn't actually result in the, the, the results I was expecting because it thought I was talking about- <laughs> Literally, <laughs> Like literally giving me the eggs. There are no Easter eggs in this though. And then we have Meet the Robinsons, which I'm quite surprised being a time travel movie and all, 
has like no Easter eggs either. The only thing in it is that there's a poster for the Jungle Book during like the baseball game where his villain origin story started. But I don't really know what that means. Jungle Book didn't even connect either. Yeah. So yeah, th that's also gonna go in the corner. And with that, we can move on to the animal focused movies. Again. We're talking proper animal focused movies now. Like Lion King was kind of, okay, there are no humans present in this. These are literal, they've taken humans and replace them with animals. Quite literally in the case of Robin Hood, Robin Hood is a real person that existed once, as did Prince John, King Richard, and literally turned them into animals. So yeah, realistically, I don't think there's even a point trying to argue <laughs> it. I, there's no Easter eggs in it either, by the way. The only thing I can find is that they copied some animation. Chicken Little, there's nothing to that. What, I, what do you want me to say? It's Chicken Little. This movie's just stupid. Which brings us on to our final movie, Zootopia. You're From wrong. It's Zootropolis. Once again, everything in this movie, from the shops, music, and films, are animalified parodies of real life things. But, this one, I think, has a claim to be a movie inside the universe around the time of Big Hero 6. So to start, in the little Rodentia bit in the movie where she's like chasing Duke Weaselton around the mice town, there's a little cafe called Lucky Cat Cafe, which has the exact same font as the Lucky Cat Cafe that Hero's aunt owns in Big Hero 6. Maybe Hero's aunt's got a little bit of product placement going on in there, you know? Oh, that, it's like, uh, yeah, um... There's more, there's more, don't worry. Chief Bogo, you know, the, like, the chief of police? In his office, he has a calendar which has a landscape of San Francisco, the city that Big Hero 6 is based in. This doesn't really make sense given their world is a completely separate world where Zootopia exists, implying that maybe it's just a city from the real world and this is a movie. That's the evidence from inside Zootopia. There's also evidence inside Big Hero 6 through the fact that there's a billboard with Nick from Zootopia on it. What would they be advertising? Maybe a movie that they made? And also, Honey Lemon from Big Hero 6 has a phone case with Nick from Zootopia on it. Again, more merchandise. That's four connections between those two movies. Obviously they don't exist in the same universe, but I think there's some decent evidence. It could maybe be a movie inside a movie. This has no real impact on the overall board. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, we use yellow yarn for in-universe movie. You're welcome. Here it is, guys, can you do it? It's the final pin of the day. Is he gonna mess it up or is he gonna nail it? And there we have it. No, we don't have it. I went to all that effort to do the deer thing and I didn't even realize it didn't even connect to the rest of the stuff. <laughs> and there we have it. The finished Disney cinematic universe, 30 films, one Disney Junior TV show. Two of them need a parallel universe and one of them is a movie inside a movie. So technically we got 27. That's pretty good considering it's more than half. I can't wait for people to comment about how I missed the 100 Easter eggs in Home on the Range, but let me know what I should try and do next. Do DreamWorks movies all exist in the same universe? And yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. You can go check out my Pixar version of this by clicking this link. You can subscribe by clicking here. You can check out my Patreon by clicking here and my Twitch in the description down below. I'm sorry I haven't streamed as much lately. I've been working on this. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a bit time consuming. Thanks for watching. Genuinely, let me know what you want me to do next. Okay, cool. Bye.